All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon and welcome to today's premium account short form market update. Any individual reading or listening should discuss with their financial planner or advisor the merits of any recommendation offer presented in this material for their own specific circumstances and realise that not all investments are appropriate for every individual every individual. Presented today, myself, Leon Hine, current Managing Director of Global Equity Management. The format for today's presentation, it is a short form webinar, so it's a quick summary of the macro uh, update affecting equity markets. We roll through a few of the select ASX top 50 stocks that have been in the news over the course of the last week. We review our recent transactions and conclude with a summary of our portfolio allocations and short term market outlook. The services that we provide are up on screen there, and if you'd like to know more about those, please contact either myself for Christine, info at investorsignals.com. <clears throat> The XJO up on screen there at a macro level, just to touch on sort of some of the comments that have come out of the ECB. The Eurozone delivered uh, very little uh, and slightly negative contribution to GDP growth over the 2013 year. They have upgraded 14 forecasts to just over 1% growth. So I think that sort of continues to support our view that into 2014 we should begin to see the early signs of some type of synchronised global growth. Um, <clears throat> the Federal Reserve are unlikely to really see a wind back in their stimulus program until probably March and I think even then there's a question mark over uh, whether the growth rate in the US economy will really facilitate any meaningful wind back in their bond buying program. So <clears throat> what we look for is equity markets. We know they're trading on high PEs. We know global bond yields are down at very low levels which is continuing to drive money into equity markets. I think that will ensure that any sell off is met with further um, buying support given the large amounts of cash that are still on the sideline uh, from equity markets. When we look at the XJO at the moment, about 15 times 2014 earnings, uh, it's hard to build a case that the market pushes too much higher. Over the course of the last few months, we've had a big adjustment there in the banking stocks, and then most recently, we've had the contribution come through from the resource stocks, as we've seen slightly better data out of China, and... Uh, more bullish comments out of the resource companies following their recent quarterly production numbers. So our base um, forecast for equity markets is that we largely move sideways into the early part of 2014. At the margin, there may be some support for the market around sort of that December, January period. But given that we are coming from a reasonably expensive price point, um, albeit well supported on the downside, I think we get into some sort of grind sideways and then a push higher as we get more confirmation around the synchronised global recovery story into 2014. Uh, the first stocks to take a look at in today's report is the Westpac. So we've seen uh, ANZ, NAB, uh, Macquarie and Westpac all report results over the last week or two. From Westpac's perspective, it was uh, well, probably Westpac and ANZ slightly beat uh, analyst expectation. NAB came in line. Macquarie delivered you know, quite a strong result as well. Um, <clears throat> we're positioned on the long side of Westpac and ANZ predominantly coming into the upcoming dividends. We've sold the European calls over those, so we've collected call premium just above where we're sitting at the moment and collect the upcoming dividend. I think we're in for a period of consolidation uh, post the ex-dividend uh, period for Westpac, ANZ and NAB. We'll see some rotation into CBA uh, post the other three uh, paying their dividends. Uh, CBA of note come out with their first quarter 2014 earnings uh, <coughs> today, so we'll be interested to I'll provide an update on that in next week's recording. Um, <coughs> With all the banks sitting back at a dividend yield just over 5% again, I think this supports the view that they are tracking sideways. General commentary out of the banks are looking for around 4 to 5% revenue growth and a couple of percent uh, growth in costs. Uh, and I think that sort of feeds into our overall view that 2014 earnings for the bank should deliver around about 40, uh, around about um, uh, 5% EPS growth and we should see very small dividend upgrades given that they're already sitting at the high end of their payout ratios. Uh, Amcor, so <laughs> just um, confirmation around the spin-off of the 
uh, Australian packaging division. I spoke last week about the renaming of that. That'll become Aurora. So we'd expect to see the spin-off to take place in December. Um, our strategy here is to continue to uh, even accumulate Amcor at or near these levels. I think we could see Amcor push up to around 11.25. Post the spin-off of the Aurora uh, business, we would again become buyers of Amcor post that spin-off as I think you'll see Amcor probably trade on a slightly higher PE even than where it sits at the moment as investors seek to get exposure to sort of the faster growing emerging market side of the Amcor business. Uh, Stockland's AGM during the week just reaffirmed that the company's expecting earnings growth of around 4 to 6 percent. I've spoken on this one in the past recordings. We do own it at lower levels. Up here at $4, we've taken the opportunity to sell the calls up at $4.20. We collect the upcoming dividend. We collect that call premium at 100% payout ratio for the dividend. I don't see that there's a lot of scope for any dividend upgrades at 4 to 6% earnings growth. I think what we're likely to see is a consolidation of Stockland at or near these levels. So I think we've set the right strategy there uh, over Stockland. Uh, NAB also reported its results, probably came in in line with expectation. We've got the upcoming dividend, uh, again in line with our view on the banks in general. I think we get into a period of consolidation and we're looking for about 3 to 5 percent EPS growth in 2014 out of, uh, out of NAB. Asiano, following their AGM, reported that first quarter volumes um, the message was that essentially management are saying they're still not seeing any significant signs of economic recovery in Australia. Um, that's probably backed up a little bit by the RBA's uh, comments and I think to uh, focus on sort of their most recent comments following the meeting yesterday is that uh, there's still concern around the high Aussie dollar and the impact that's having on the Australian economy. I think that bodes well that you know, that, that they'll be looking for signs to continue to cut interest rates, which still should support the large pool of superannuation funds funneling into Australian equities uh, to take advantage of the higher uh, dividend income relative to bond yields. So from Asiano's point of view, we always sort of had a view that it was a little expensive up here at around $6. At around $5.50, we're happy to take a look at it to put some numbers around that. At $5.50, we're buying the stock on about 14 and a half times. 2014 earnings. The stock only yields about 2%, which is partly the reason why we've looked at other opportunities in the market. I think there's better growth opportunities uh, with higher yield, but certainly if Asiano pulls back to around that 5 to 550 range, happy to take a look at it. Uh, Origin reported their first quarter 14 production numbers. Uh, they came in slightly above expectation. The issue here for Origin is it's trading on a very high PE up at about 18 times 2014 earnings. Uh, I've got the stock trading at about a 3.5% dividend yield. So I don't think there's a lot more upside for Origin over the next six months. Certainly the uptick in earnings if you push out to 2015, 2016 could justify Origin trading upwards of $20. But I think we're in for a period of consolidation. So we're happy to own it at these levels, but looking to sell calls at around that $15 price point on origin. And finally in the news this week we had Woolworths, so they reported their first quarter 14 sales, they were up 3%. The company uh, appears to be on track to deliver EPS growth into 2014 of around 4 to 7%. Um, <coughs> our strategy here with Woolworths is to own it at these levels. We're going out into the early part of the new year selling European covered calls. We're locking in the uh, February, March dividend and that call premium. Given that the stock's trading forward multiples about 18 times earnings and only a 4% dividend yield, I think anything above sort of $35, $50, $36 it starts to get expensive and I think the trading range for Woolworths over the next 12 months really is between sort of $33.50 and say $36.50. Uh, from a Activity standpoint in client accounts and our internal portfolio throughout the course of the week, we continue to be buyers of brambles on this sell-off. We've got the spin-off of the recall assets that will take place in December, providing that uh, it has majority shareholder vote. Our strategy here is to wait until post the demerger and we'll dispose of the recall 
uh, shares on market and will continue to sort of build a position in Brambles. The recall shares will equal roughly 75 cents of distribution uh, that will be stripped out of the Bramble share price and we'd look for the stock to sort of find a support level soon after that uh, distribution has occurred. At around uh, 17 times forward earnings and about 5% EPS growth, Brambles is uh, reasonably expensive but um, I think the spin-off of recall and a refocus on uh, the fact that Brambles will benefit from some type of synchronised pickup in global GDP uh, should underpin the share price. So again, it's one of those stocks where we're happy to own it uh, at or near these levels and sell uh, covered calls. At around this 975 level, we see the stock as reasonably full value. Uh, also, uh, Woodside Petroleum during the course of this week uh, we have been buyers of it at lower levels and we're waiting for it to rally up to around this 39.50 level and we've taken advantage of selling covered calls into December uh, at around anywhere between $40 and 39.50 and we're achieving around 70 odd cents for those so providing an effective exit price up at above $40 and we see that as really a range that uh, Woodside Petroleum should start to consolidate. We're looking for about 8% earnings growth in Woodside in 2014 and the stock's trading on, on around about a 55 to 6% uh, dividend yield. And just to uh, conclude today, it is a short form webinar. Next week I'll run through the full top 50 stocks and sort of bring all the data that we've discussed over the past few weeks together into one presentation and outline our sort of full strategy across the top 50 stocks. Right at the moment, I think as we get sort of into the conclusion of the uh, US earnings season, I think we get some level of consolidation in the Australian market. There's a lot of capital on the sideline, low bond yields, support equity valuations and central banks are certainly doing everything they, that they can to stimulate economic growth and I'd expect that to start to sort of support valuations in the next year. Um, <clears throat> given that the market's coming already from a reasonably high valuation, I think we're probably entering a period which should deliver above average returns as a result of running a covered call strategy where a lot of the market will largely move sideways and we'll have the benefit of collecting the dividends, collecting the call premium, generating somewhere in the order of 10% cash flow as a combination of that and then allowing for some capital growth uh, through uh, being sort of acquiring the shares at the right value and being knocked out at the sort of top end of that resistance level or where we set those call strikes. Uh, if you'd like to know more about the services that we provide, uh, there's information on screen. I look forward to speaking again next week.